So I will give you a, a brief update from the demand side of where we think we're going and where we want to go. Not in terms, you've heard enough already, a lot about the CERN use cases, ESA use cases and EMBL use cases. But how can we put together a grouping of organizations to, to do the procurement? You've heard in the roadmap and with the current uh, version that there is a legal structure in place, there is a contractual structure in place, and the intention is to simplify that in the future. In parallel to that, we have to see who else can we interest, at least initially from the public sector, that would also like to bring in their value into this thing as well. So, Frederick already this, uh, early this afternoon mentioned this document where the eight European labs in different, uh, in different disciplines came together and looked at their view of how they see infrastructure going in the future. And really, the point I wanted to highlight here is that we, we want to be able to offer this range of, see a range of technologies into a so service-oriented platform for the global research community through innovative business models. So for us, the work going, inside, in going on inside Helix Nebula is completely consistent with what's laid, laid out inside that vision document. Um, you can access that online as well if you want to at that, uh, that point there. The other thing that's in there, which is very clear as well, is with this introduction of Helix Nebula, we are potentially changing the way that research does business, the funding model behind research. The idea up until now is that the, all the uh, public funding organizations funding the researchers were purchasing equipment for them and offering the services to those people directly. Yeah. So they were funding upfront capital expenditure into the equipment. With this model, we're going to change a bit. And so it has some advantages for the funding agencies as well. Of course, whenever they do that, if you think of Gion, EGI and all these things, it's difficult for those structures always to be able to justify to those funding agencies what is the impact of the investments that are being made. Going into this model where those structures can participate, it's easier for the funding agencies to see where those euros are going and what impact they're having on the overall public research sector. And also one of the other things is for them is to know how they can offer their data services, their data sets, their knowledge and experience. How can they offer that in this market and what impact has it had? So they want to be able to know that the, 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 the uh, infrastructure providers and so on need to under, be able to understand the market itself. They don't have a very good market survey at the moment. There's no easy way for people to understand what's needed in the public research sector. So changing this funding model will help to provide that market knowledge and that market insight as well. And also, of course, as we said all the way wrong, it's, to do this is very important that the user communities, the organisations that you've seen today and so on, are part of this governance model and can help drive it in a direction because we can bring in that uh, requirements part as well. But it's not just us. Uh, we've talked about the LHC, we've talked about genome sequencing, we've walk, walked about uh, uh, satellite data as well. But Europe itself, in the public research area, is foreseeing essentially to build something like 32 LHCs in the future. Lots of different disciplines, right? They're not all synchrotrons, ray, uh, accelerators. Right? But in the life sciences discipline, in the environmental sciences, social science and humanities, and the f uh, physics environment and uh, analytical machines. And so the different member states across Europe are looking to do that. Now at the moment, they're all developing their computing models. All right? And the worst scenario one can imagine is we end up with 32 siloed computing infrastructures for each of those research infrastructures. That would be a great waste and duplication of the, of the resources, the experience and the knowledge across those things. And they started to come together, and in fact they've been rough set a little bit, um, they come together and you, you can, if you look between the red lines, they've been analysing across those four sectors what are the things they have in common? Right? What do they think they can do together? And you see service marketplace is one of them that all four of those sectors see as being very important they can do it together. There are many other areas in here which are also relevant 
for cloud services and many of those things you've heard about today are being built into the Helix, ne Helix Nebula marketplace already. But the key point is they all say they want to have access to some sort of marketplace for services. So that document, there's another document across those 32 infrastructures that come together. They're written and that's available as well, also online for this DOI, so you can look at that in more detail if you want. But the bottom line is there's a lot bigger market here, as Mick was pointing out. It's a new market. It's a bigger market than just CERN, ESA and EMBL. There's a lot of potential use in there, and putting a structure like this in place will help those member states are investing in those research infrastructures have a mechanism by which rather than investing in capital expenditure for the IT they can invest in offering the services that are required and as those infrastructures grow the level of services grow the number of users grow they can grow with it and their investment can go at the same time on the same side um, from the um, the steering group of the European uh, Cloud Partnership, a structure organized uh, with the European Commission, which has leading uh, IT uh, industry participants. I believe it's also presided by the president of Estonia, if I'm correct, uh, as, re as leading that. And they have highlighted the work that's going on already in this public-private type of structures being essential for what Europe has to do in the future. And if you look through this text, they highlight already that the work of Helix Nebula is particularly relevant and needs to be built on urgently in the, fr in the future if we want to achieve this goal. So we see from, from industry, we see from the funding agencies, we see from the research needs as well, there's a definite push to try and go in this direction. But it needs some coordination. Right? Um, and what we've learned from all this, already from Helix Nebula in the two years, if you, if you put it down, what we can see already, is that there's a great interest from in the public organisations in the sense that they see value and opportunities in using commercial cloud services. That wasn't clear before Helix Nebula. But now it's quite obvious to the people there's been enough studies done on the technology, on the structure, the organisation, the business model and so on, to see that it is relevant and it can work. Okay? And then the... Um, the production usage of commercial cloud services has already started. They're not waiting for people, but it's being done in a very fragmented manner, and it's not being done in an organized manner by which we can help the IT industry come together and by which we can ensure that Europe itself grows a stronger uh, resulting offer. Right? And of course, as you've heard as well from the, the, uh, the suppliers this morning, that now for them, of course, the public sector is a potentially very profitable sector that they could go into where these services can make a big difference. Yeah. But um, the procurement of commercial cloud services poses questions for organisations like CERN, ESA, EMBL and all the others. We have to change our procurement model. We have to go into that structure. We talk about in future releases being able to use um, electronic online procurement. We have to change our procedures in order to do that. And CERN and these other organisations are not alone. It's the same for much of the public sector itself. We have to change our procurement model. It has definite advantages going this way in terms of time to deployment, uh, the reducing the time it takes to go through all the steps. But we have to convert our procedures in order to do that. Right? And that's one of the things that we believe we can do. And so a coordinated approach by the public organisations will help structure the industry, we think, and also this market and reduce the burden on any of us individually, be it the public organisation or any individual IT company. So what we're proposing to do, we'll start, be starting this work uh, later in the year, is to build what we call a, sort of a European procurers platform. So this is the idea, it will work on what you've seen already uh, being going on inside Helix Nebula, be intimately linked to what's happening inside Helix Nebula as well. But also there are other uh, projects that are funded by the European Commission, like the Cloud for Europe and so on, which is also looking at public sector procurement. And we want to do that together to, to sort of share the ideas and the experience of going on and build together a better knowledge in terms of best practices, identify what are the barriers that stop people from using at the moment, how can we get over those, how can we simplify it as well. Uh, specific case studies, you've seen three uh, today already. And also sort of how do we do it on a cross-border? There are structures in each country which are all being set up which work specifically for that country. But what about at the European level? How are we going to do that? The three labs you've seen here today are special in that case because they're already across many multiple uh, member states and they have special knowledge that can help in that procurement process as well. And of course the important thing is we want to build up a, a research procurement 
roadmap. Think of those 32 research infrastructures. Understanding what quantity of services, what quality, and when they're going to need that will be good information to the IT industry and to the funding agencies so they know how to prepare better in the future. And all this for us is preparation for this commons marketplace where we can put together these two different elements. And with that, I'd like to hand over to Marion Langert from ESA who will describe the marketplace for us. 